He's gone again. He left home hours ago. What good is my sorcery if I can't help my own boy? Answer me, someone. <coughs> He's not fooling me. I know where he is. He's at the magic pool again. Love is his curse. He is in love. Do you think I don't know it? I've tried to cure him of it. Am I losing my skill as a sorceress? No. No, Sybil. Doesn't my witchcraft cure snake bites, chillblains, carbuncles, pink eye, hangnails, and unhappy memories? Yes. Yes, Sybil. Then why can't I rid the boy of this, this fever? George is a man. And human. Human, yes. But hardly a man. He's a mere boy of 20. In love. George. Already a man. In love. He ought to be at home learning a good trade. Like mine. Mm. Pool of magic. Obey my wish. Bring her vision into my sight. That's right. That's right. Find her. She's at the palace. No, no, inside. Perhaps the throne room. Sunken garden in the palace by the Oriental Pool. That's right. That's right. There she is. There she is. Water's chilled your hot temper, my lady. No, I'm just as furious as ever. Oh, princess. Oh, it's easy enough for you to talk. You can do whatever you please. Fall in love, fall out of it again. A squire one day, a stable boy the next. But I might as well be a prisoner in a tower. I can't even speak to a man, let alone have him look at me. It's a penalty of being a princess. But even a princess should be allowed romance. Oh, how will I ever meet him? Who, my lady? one I could love. You have your chance someday. You run along. But you're gone. I'll dress myself. Well, then what will you do? Oh, what I always do, sit here and dream. Princess Helene. Who are you? What do you want? Stay away. Don't you come any closer. No, princess. I'm going to take care of you. I must leave here. She's in danger. Who in the nether world are you talking about? Princess Helene. I loved her from the first moment I saw her. <laughs> A reflection in the water and you call it love, you silly child. Something terrible has happened to her. Let me see what you're talking about. 
Magic mirror. Show me what has upset my boy. The princess is gone, Your Majesty. She's not in her quarters, not in the garden, not by the pool. Yet no one saw her leave the palace. We've searched everywhere. Then turn out the guards, Branton. We have done that, my liege. Until she is found, no one will be permitted in or out of the palace. Who is this? We found him skulking within the eastern postern, my liege. He won't speak. There are means to make him speak. Spratton. Your most serene majesty, you can call off the search. The princess, your daughter, is in my castle, under lock and key. Who are you? Rodak. The sorcerer? I'm flattered that my reputation has preceded me. Lodak, you say my daughter is at your castle. But why? How have I hurt you? Why have you done this thing? The answer is very simple. Your father executed my sister for witchcraft when she was only 18 years old. I have waited until your daughter reached that age so that my dragon could relish the flesh of the princess. Lord Eric, I beseech you. Beseech nothing, my liege. Will you have this worm-eaten sorcerer frighten us? Be careful, Branton. Not I. Lodak, I shall find your castle, free the princess, and see you destroyed. Finding my castle is no great task. It's a short journey of about a week. You simply follow the yellow star of the north. The trick is how to get there. Alive. I shall. I'm afraid not. Now seven times do I cross the road that lies between this castle and mine. Let no one live who dares the dark journey. Let no man face my seven curses and reach the dragon's lair. Your curses won't stop me from reaching your castle. The Princess Elaine will make a delicate dish for my dragon in exactly seven days' time. And now, if you'll excuse me. Mr. Branton, my daughter will die. No, sire, for I will rescue her. You'll risk the seven curses? For Helene, I'd risk 70. The man who saves Helene will have her hand in marriage and half my kingdom, too. Trust me, sire. No, no, it is I who must save the princess, not Sir Branton. I love her. Do you think I'd let you face Lodak's sorcery? I'm not afraid. 300 years ago, my father and brother were devoured by Lodak's dragon. And my family were great sorcerers in their own right. But they were no match for Lodak. I am no match for Lodak. I confess it. I fear him almost as much as I hate him. But, Sebo, I mean... You will stay right here at home where you are safe. You can have anything you want. But oh. you're staying here. All I want is my freedom so I can save the girl I love. But you wouldn't understand that not being mortal. I've tried to do my best. Oh, I know you have, Sybil. Can't you call me mother? I'm sorry, mother. You were only a week old when your royal parents died from the plague. I found you, reared you as my own son. Oh, you've been kind and loving, and, and I'd do anything for you. But I can't stay here with you anymore. I'm not a child. I'm 20, and I love Helene. Talk to me of love when you're 420. When your human 20 is old enough to feel love and misery. Now, give me my freedom. I must say you're being very difficult tonight. Oh, well, boys will be boys. Uh, we'll, we'll have to cheer you up. Watch Mother now. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Mother, not that trick again. <laughs> George, I've never seen you like this before. Look, if you'll cheer up, forget about that girl and Lodak. I'll let you see the presents I've chosen for you when you're 21. What sort of presents, Mother? Come along. I'll show you. Like him? He's magnificent. He's yours when you're 21. His name is Bayard. He's no ordinary animal. He possesses magic. This is the fastest horse in all the world. No other steed can beat him. when you ride the stallion. Does this armor possess magic too? No weapon can pierce it. And this is Ascalon, the blade. None like it since the world began. It defies all swords in battle. Black magic is overcome by a touch of the blade. So there, all yours when you are 21. Then I'll let you go after Lodak for my revenge as well as your own. And with the help of their magic, I could save the princess now. No. You're not old enough. You wouldn't know how to use them. Oh, just let me, just let me hold the sword. Just to get the feel of it. Please. Well, just for a while. <laughs> Very well. It feels like a part of my own body. Oh, I feel stronger. Of course. <laughs> Now, come along. It pleases me to show you something else tonight. Who are they? Once, the six most valiant knights in the world. Yeah. It's real black magic, Mother. I wish I could take the credit. I've never been as good as that. No, it was my brother. You like Ascalon, George? It's just great. Did the sword do that? Certainly. One touch of the blade and it opens and shuts floors, doors, walls and portcullises. Mm. It shuts things too, you say. What's down there? Well, I haven't been down there in centuries. Used to be my brother's safe deposit box for spells, enchantments, magic ritual and the like. Want to see? Is there any other way out if the crack were closed again? Depends how hard you work at it. A cousin of mine took 80 years to whoomp up a spell that blew the roof off, but don't be afraid. We won't close the crack behind us. Oh, I'm not afraid. Uh, you go first, Mother. Hmm? Coming, dear? Yes. Goodbye, Mother. George, son, let me out this instant. You can't leave me here. I told you about my cousin. I'll come back and let you out after I've rescued the Princess Helene. Walter, you can't come back. With a magic armor, magic sword, magic steed, what can stop me now? You don't know no that George, George, let me out.
I had six brave men like these, I'd have nothing to fear. Monsieur, you have been a long time to come, but on the behalf of my friend, merci bien. Your Majesty, I pledge my sword to your service, my life to our mutual hope, and my heart to the Princess Helene. Very well said, Branton. But I can't help but feel a little nervous. You still won't take these 50 knights who have offered to ride with you? No, sire. They are all brave men. But one man can venture where 50 cannot. You are the bravest of all. Return Helene safely, and I'll be the proudest father-in-law in Christendom. That's a strange ring, Branton. Do you wear it for luck? Luck must not play a part when your daughter's life is at stake. Go, my friend, and all my good wishes go with you. Your Majesty, these knights and I have come to serve you in your hour of need. That's very kind. Who are you? I am Sir George, a knight by virtue of 400 years of noble lineage. Welcome, good sir. These are my comrades in arms. Sir Denis of France. Votre Majesté, c'est un honneur. Sir Erwick of Germany. Mein Kaiser, we come to serve. Sir Anthony of Italy. A servizio. Sir Pedro of Spain. Su servido, Your Majesty. Sir James of Scotland. Our hearts grieve for you and your sorrow, Your Majesty. And last, Sir Patrick of Ireland. We pledge our lives to your service and to the Princess Helene until she's safe. Gentlemen, speaking for the King, we are grateful for your offer. I am sure that you can be of immeasurable service to His Majesty while I'm away. That's not what Patrick meant, Sir Branton. Oh, you know who I am. Have we met? No, I've often seen you. In the field? Not in the field. And I also know you wish to marry the Princess Helene. Oh, quite true. You are all welcome to stay and dance at my wedding. Oh, many thanks. But I prefer to dance at my own. You're talking riddles, young man. Don't try to solve them till we've rescued the Princess Helene. We? I shall rescue Helene. Monsieur tried to understand. We are all sworn to save Sir George's beautiful lady. Sir George's lady? What does the Frenchman mean? Only that I love her and I intend to marry her. You arrogant boy. Do you know the perils of the dark journey? We do, Sir Branton. If you don't share our enthusiasm, we shall be happy to go on without you. How dare you? Your Majesty, have I your permission to give this stripling a lesson in the use of arms? I shall not draw, except in behalf of Princess Helene. Oh, coward. Draw. Enough. That's enough. Mr. Branton, I like these knights. Surely there's safety in numbers, you and seven good swords. Seven swords and seven curses. When do we start, Sir Branton? Now. We heard you were brought in this morning. 
I'm Princess Laura, and this is my sister Grace. This is our seventh day. Seventh day? Our last day, unless... Well, surely you don't believe that about the dragon. There were others here when we arrived, but they're gone now. Well, then your father will do something to save you. Well, his army is probably approaching the castle this very minute. Do you really think so? Of course. You'll be on your way home by morning. <laughs> Sisters. We're free to go home now, Father. Arrange for our release. You're not going home. Surely you must have spoken to him. I've had three long, dull sessions with him, but nothing could persuade him to give up what I asked for. I don't believe you. He'd pay you anything. Nothing. Instead, he sent an entire company of his bravest knights on the dark journey. The poor lads never even reached the third curse. Take them away. Come on. No! No, I can't do this. I can't do this. That just can't be happening. There just couldn't be anybody as cruel and evil as you. Oh, really, Helene? This isn't the first time that a princess has been fed to a dragon. And at least around here, it happens only once a week. Unless you get what you want. What ransom are you asking for me? I'm sorry, but you happen to be a particular case. I'm not asking any ransom for you at all. Then why did you bring me here? My little pet will be hungry again in six days' time. Come, let's watch. Oh, no. No, please, no. Please. Listen. The wind carries well. Don't turn your head away. You'll miss all the fun. See? It all happens very quickly. Now my little pet can sleep. Oh, it's horrible. But it won't happen to me. Their father sent a company. Well, mine will send an army. I hate to disillusion you. Uh, actually, for a while, your father seemed content to let just one knight undertake your rescue. Oh, don't blame your father. The knight talked him into it. And who is this very brave man? I'm sure you know him. Sir Branton. Sir Branton. You don't like Sir Branton? Oh, come now. A damsel in distress can't afford to pick and choose. Anyway, don't worry. Neither he nor his companions will ever get here. Companions? I thought you said Sir Branton was alone. He would have been. But some uh, foolhardy young man named George insisted on coming with them. George? Of course, you don't know him. Well, where is he? Uh, would you care to see him? See him? Certainly. I'll show you the young fool. Tell me, which one is George? The youngest. He's in the lead, riding with Sir Brandon. Those who are wise will turn back now.
is swift. It couldn't be that. What? No, 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 no. Just a stupid thought that crossed my mind. So the horse is swift. My ogre will kill them both. Are you quite sure? He did. He'll save me. I know he will. Not a chance. No one has ever survived the seven curses of Lodak. That was only the first.
back to yourself, shall we? And still not a sign of our gallant commander, Sir Branton. Is the man Haven not to pay respects when poor Ulrich and Pedro are laid to rest? Nor is the man a coward not to have lifted his sword against that monster? Branton's no coward, I'm sure of that. Now, we'll talk of the devil himself. We missed you at the burial, Sir Branton. My regrets, gentlemen, are as deep as your own. But since every minute counts, I thought it wiser for me to ride ahead and reconnoiter. What did you find? Mount your horses, gentlemen, and come see for yourselves. Look at that, George. This seems to be an unsavory region, Sir Branson. Would you be sure now that we were taking the right road? Or is it a road we're on at all? The fog's getting thicker. Where's Dennis? Where's James and Anthony? James! Dennis! Anthony! Je suis ici, mon ami! I'm over here! Well, then keep with us! Keep close! Where's Anthony? Anthony! 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 Anthony!
you seen nos amis? Where is Anthony? Where is George? We will ride on, gentlemen. They are lost for good, both of them. Not both, look! Anthony has joined Pedro and Ulrich. Forward, gentlemen. I get my hands on him. George? After all I've done for that boy. To trick me, put me in his power, me, his own foster mother. Where is he? Oh, Dad. George, his life is in danger. You're, You're tired. Tired. tired, tired. Rest, rest. I'll never rest again until I know he's safe. Oh, my boy, what have you done? Mirror of magic, bring me a vision of my boy. Why must you insist my companions turn back, Sir Branton? You and I have a good reason to continue the dark journey. Both of us in love with the same girl. Each of us hopes to rescue her. Well, what reason are the others to face Lodak's curses? As your commander, I honestly advise you to turn back now while there is still time. Do you, do you hear that, George? We should turn heel and ride back to safety, leaving you and Sir Branton. Sir Branton makes good sense. Are your wits addled? Lodak's curses have already claimed Ulrich, Pedro, and Anthony. As long as there's one of us left alive, there's hope that the princess can be saved. And nevertheless, I, I couldn't blame you for leaving. Between the curses of Lodak and Brandon's treachery, you'll be needing us. You Irish dog, what do you mean by such insolence? Dog am I, you two-faced hypocrite! Stop it, Pat! I demand an explanation. And you shall have one. My knights believe you prefer to continue the journey alone, so you could get rid of me. What nonsense. You can't deny that from the first you refused our help. Well, of course I didn't want you coming along. After all, what man wants to join forces with his rival? But once we had begun the dark journey, I accepted you completely. I have come to like you, even admire you. Yet you would have us leave, Sir George. But suspicious minds, only because of the dangers involved. Lodak's curses are killing us off one by one, curse by curse. Be that as it may, I stay with George. To the end, we'd still be statues staring at that blasted wall if George Hanna turned us into men again. And what good is it being a man again if you can't help win the fair Colleen? Thank you, Pat. All of you. There's your answer. I have to admire your courage. Good night, gentlemen. His tongue is like the honey from a clover patch. I don't believe a word the man says. If his game proves to be treachery, it will be Sir Bren who does not return from this journey. This I swear.
Phantom. Where are you? Right here. Well, I see you're in a good mood. On the contrary. I'm in a savage mood. I can't stand incompetence. You better come here alone on this phony rescue. But instead, I must waste my curses to destroy George and his knights. Talk about incompetence. In three days, you've only managed to destroy three of these interfering fools with all your magic powers. Not all my magic powers, Branton. Give me my ring, and I'll dispose of these men in quick order. What use is the ring to you? No mortal can command its magic. You'll get your ring back when I get the princess. That was our bargain. Don't you trust me? Not an inch. You're insolent. What if I cast a spell over you and turn you into a dog or a rat or a cat? And take the ring! Go ahead. Give me my ring. Now. Now! Lodak, you can't hurt me while I wear your ring. But once you have it back, what's to save me from your curses? Why would I want to hurt you? Why wouldn't you? You're only helping me now because you want to get back this ring which you so stupidly lost. Well, I'll keep my word. I'll give it back in five days' time when these curses are behind me and I've claimed the princess. You're a tough trader, Branton. We both know what we want. And we're both going to get it, so long as you dispose of these knights, especially Sir George. Sir George, yes. Twice he squirmed out of your trap, and he could do it again. Oh, no, stop worrying, Branton. You're worse than an old woman. If George and his knights are not dead by week's end... They'll die long before that. And in circumstances worse than anything I've conjured up yet. One of them's coming here now, to his death. Well, the gallant Frenchman. He followed me. He's in my horse. All right. Don't lose your head. Let him come in here. We'll be ready for him. Frère Jacques, Frère Jacques, dormez-vous, dormez-vous, sonne les matins. Et la petite, cette française Naturellement, monsieur. Comment vous appelez-vous Mignonette, monsieur. Mignonette. Chérie, mignonnette, je te cherche depuis si longtemps. Enfin, je te trouve. Oh, moi aussi. Oh, Denis, je t'aime, mon cher amant. Tu es si beau, si bon. Donne-moi mm. tes lèvres. Encore une fois, uh -uh. donne-moi tes uh -uh. lèvres. Non, non. Chérie, je te jure, je t'aime. Oh, uh -uh. moi aussi, cher Denis, je t'aime. was close. You saved my life, mon ami. We Frenchmen, we have a weakness for a pretty woman. Lorak bewitched you. Yes. 
I should have known that such a pretty creature will not be at this early hour. But I was robbed of all thought, except one. No doubt knows how a Parisian feels. Why did you come here? I don't remember. Wait! Mon Dieu! What is it? Branton! What about him? He's in that mill! I'm sure of it, I saw his horse. He's still there. Sir Branton! Senor Branton? Well, good morning, gentlemen. Is it good? May we ask what you're doing here? Well, someone has to do the thinking for you. As your 